let me go ahead and warn you, this will not be pretty. We're still trying to solve by completing the square. Now, you, you guys see that this isn't a 1x square, so there's going to be some work uh, to be done here. But follow those steps that we had in the last video for, uh, for completing the square. Now, the first step was to move the constant to the other side. So 2x squared minus 7x, and this is going to equal negative 6. That's the first step. That's, that's simple. I mean, that's, you know, very, very beginnings of algebra that you've seen. Move things from one side to the other. Now, the second step said to divide by the coefficient of x squared. Now, the other examples that we've done, it was already a 1x squared. But this is a 2, so that means we have to divide everything by that lead coefficient of 2. I know, I can hear, I can hear complaining already. But won't that give me a fraction? Yes, it will give you a fraction. I told you this was not going to be nice. I told you it wasn't going to be pretty. Evidently, you didn't believe me because you're still watching the video. But that's, you know, good for you. It'll toughen you up. So you have x squared minus 7 halves x equals negative 3. Now, we've got to complete the square with something that already has a coefficient that's a fraction. So, if we remember what we saw in the other video, I will not divide this guy by 2. Instead, I'm going to multiply times 1 half. It will accomplish the same thing, but it is not going to cause us to have a really ugly looking fraction. So, instead of dividing by 2 and squaring it, we're going to multiply times 1 half and then square that. So, this guy will become negative 7 fourths squared and that will become a positive 49 over 16. So this is what I need to add to both sides in order to complete the square. So I'm going to add 49 over 16 to both sides and add 49 over 16 to the right side. So that's the magic number that we needed to add to complete the square. Again, we wanted to add this special number so that the left side could factor as a binomial square. And it will factor as x minus 7 fourths. I'm not pulling the 7 fourths out of thin air. It's this guy right here. Before you squared to get the 49 over 16, you had negative 7 fourths. This is the number that connects between the 49 over 16 and the negative 7 halves. On the right side, of course, you're just combining fractions. When you get your like denominator and add, you're going to come up with a positive 1 over 16. So now we have factored as a binomial square. And well, there's only one step left to do, and that is to apply the square root property and solve. So for the square root property, we're going to take the square root of both sides. Remember your plus or minus. So when I do that, I now have x minus 7 fourths is equal to plus or minus. Now, even though this is a fraction, don't freak out about it. Because the square root of 1 is just 1, and the square root of 16 is just 4. See, that's no big deal. And then we want to move the 7 fourths to the other side. So when we do that, we have x equals a positive 7 fourths plus or minus 1 fourth. Now, as we've talked about these guys before, when you go through and you either you complete the square, the square root property, whatever, you have this plus or minus and there's no i and there are no radicals, you need to separate this to get your two solutions because there are no i's and no radicals to get in your way. So your first solution x equals 7 fourths plus 1 fourth. And then you've got your other one, which is x equals 7 fourths minus 1 fourth. So here, 7 fourths plus 1 fourth is going to give you 8 over 4, and that just equals 2. And for this other guy, you're going to get 6 over 4, and that would reduce to be 3 halves. Here's something you need to know. If 
you go through whatever process you're doing, you come up with the nice answers like this. Nothing imaginary, no radicals. That means you could have taken this original equation and solved it by factoring. In fact, that's what I want us to look at right now. What if I had taken this guy and I had solved it by factoring? So we're just going to rewrite this guy and see what happens. So we have 2x squared minus 7x plus 6 is equal to 0. Well, if we're going to solve this by factoring, this is a trinomial with no common factor other than 1. So it should factor as two binomial factors if it factors at all. 2x squared is going to break down as 2x times x. You've got to multiply, get a positive number. So the signs must be the same. In this case, they both must be negative. Now the right combination of breaking down the 6 that works is going to be 2x minus 3 and then x minus 2 right here. And you can easily check this to verify. Here's your negative 3x, negative 4x, and that gives you the negative 7x in the middle like you're supposed to have. When you finish solving this guy, the methods that we saw before from the factoring chapter, to solve this guy for x, you would add 3, divide by 2, and your other solution. If x minus 2 equals 0, that means that x means that x equals positive 2. And these are the same two answers that we had the first time we did it. So when you've got these problems, and if you don't have to solve by a particular way, if the instructions don't say solve by completing the square, solve by the quadratic formula, this is what you need to be thinking. W T F does not mean one. It does not mean Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. It means would that factor. Just take a few moments to see if the polynomial that you have is factorable. If you can factor it, you can save yourself a lot of time.